we are getting there. Hi, I'm Nick Shada at Kilomot Kayaks. This is the final episode of Building the Skin on Frame Micro Bootlegger Sport. In this episode, I'll paint the fabric, make and install a seat, and add some deck lines. I decided on a two-tone paint job. I thought it would look nice to have the top side a cream color and the bottom a pale green. I want to make the transition right at the waterline. I'm using the main string as a reference, as it would be parallel to the waterline. According to my calculations, if I make the transition between colors two inches below the bottom of the main stringer, it should be about perfect. Taping a pencil to a scrap piece of the main stringer created a gauge about two inches. Running the top of the gauge along the bottom edge of the main stringer, I made a series of marks. My plan was to run masking tape along the marks to define the bottom edge, but I tried everything and nothing would stick to the raw fabric. I ended up just masking off the combing area to keep the paint off the wood and only on the cloth. Without the masking tape at the waterline, I instead used my marks as a guide to brush paint along the bottom edge. I wanted to go a little beyond so I could overlap with the bottom color. Once I had the edge defined, I used a roller to cover the long, wide surfaces. Up around the combing, I used a brush to work paint into the fabric and the stitches. This 14 ounce cloth is fairly thick and has quite a bit of texture. While I'm not trying to fill the weave or make a smooth surface, I do want the paint to soak deeply into the fabric. This stuff absorbs a lot of paint. I bought a quart of each color of the best exterior latex the home center had and ended up using all of it to apply two coats over everything. After the top side dried, I flipped the boat over. Now with paint on the surface, masking tape did stick, so I remarked the waterline and taped it off. The green tape stuck better, the blue tape gave me a wider tape line. I kept coming back over the same area while the paint was wet. This gave the fabric a chance to soak up some paint. I don't think the paint or anything really truly bonds well to the polyester material, but after soaking into the weave, the paint created a good mechanical bond with the cloth. Again, latex house paint isn't necessarily the most durable option. There are some two-part urethanes out there that are wicked solid. But latex is very affordable, and it's easy to get in any colors to suit your taste, and they're probably tough enough for most uses. And should you scratch it up, touch-ups are easy. I modified my standard seat so I could adapt it into the skin-on frame. The CNC machine chews through mini cell like nobody's business. I started with a roughing pass using a half-inch end mill, then came back over with a ball nose on the finishing pass. I made the step over wide because it's foam. It's not like I'm going to sand it later. After thinking about it for a while, I decided I wanted some slats under the seat. A pair of butt bumps sticking out of the bottom when you paddle isn't a big deal, but who needs the bruises if you paddle over a log? This lashing would have been easier to accomplish before installing the skin, and then in the future I'll likely incorporate some mortises in the frame to accept the tabs. But that's the whole reason for making a prototype, figuring out what to do better next time. The seat wedges tightly between the frames and stringers. I may glue it in eventually, but it seems fine like it is. The backrest has elastic straps behind to help hold it up. I loop these elastics up and around the next frame back. I'd envisioned the forward straps on the backrest being bolted to the solid section of the side frames. Unfortunately, I didn't get the solid part in the right place. Instead, I just ran a loop of webbing up and around the next frame forward. I decided to go with fairly minimal deck lines. I measured out three spots six inches apart into the center of the main stringer. Used an awl to open up a hole in the fabric. A screw through a finish washer on a loop of webbing should make a reasonably secure attachment point for a shock cord. Notice that somewhere off camera I added automotive vinyl striping tape along the waterline. The shock cord is threaded through these loops, back and forth to either side. It requires a bunch of sliding and pulling to get enough cord through all the loops. My standard system for linking the shock cord back together is a couple hog rings. These stainless steel bits of wire are crimped around the cord, then hidden under a length of heat shrink tubing. With the heat shrink shrunk, the kayak's done. As of this point, I've not yet put it in the water, but I will say it was a fun project. I gave myself three weeks between the time I started designing and finishing it up. I was able to do that easily, with plenty of time for other stuff. A lot of people have been asking if I'll offer plans or kits. That's a goal, but this boat was just a proof of concept. The largest task in offering plans and kits is not building the boat, but writing the instructions. I need to test the design, modify it as needed, build another and document it with photos and more in-depth videos, then write a comprehensive manual. Writing takes longer than building. Unfortunately, I can't estimate when I'll have that project done. I'll post a notice here when it's ready. 
If you're interested, do let me know in the comments. Obviously, a lot of interest would be motivation for me to work faster. I think it's a great project, fun and easy, and a cool boat when you're done. I'll be posting on the water video as soon as I can. Right now, my river's frozen, so it might be a while. In the next week or so, I should be starting on my next build. If you'd like to follow the new project, subscribe, follow, turn on notifications, whatever. Keep your eyes peeled on this channel. If you have any questions about this build, please feel free to post a comment. I'll try and answer them all. If you're watching on Facebook, check out my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, check out my Facebook page. If you find these videos interesting or helpful, I would appreciate your support on my Patreon page. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy paddling!